in the twine. The strands are then twined together to make rope. The twining of all rope for the East India Man was done in collaboration with the historical rope makers facility in Elpangen. Here the well-known Danish expert in rope making, Ola Magnus, is seen at work. All rope will be produced under the supervision of Ola Magnus before the vessel leaves the dock. Once the rope has been twined, there is still a lot left to do. All kinds of stops and bindings, or servings, have to be put on the rope. Before the rope can be used, it also has to be stretched. Here, a finished shroud is carried out before it is fitted in the rigging. The shroud holds up the mast from the side. Here two skilled riggers are tying a so-called stay knot, an important detail for the prow. Some 30 tons of rope will be used for the ship's rigging. The weakest is 10 millimeters thick, while the strongest is 90 millimeters. Around a thousand blocks will be needed, from small single blocks to large halyard blocks. The blocks are made of elm and come in all different shapes and sizes. The block shells are made from a single piece rather than several pieces joined together. The blocks are sawn out with a bandsaw and chainsaw, but are then shaped using hand tools. A hollow is made at the end of the block for the stop bolt that will eventually hold the block. Finally, the shells are impregnated with the linseed oil. The ship will be decorated with various kinds of wood carving. For instance, symbols will be used instead of letters to write the ship's name. As she is called the Gothenburg, the ship will have the Gothenburg city arms on the stern. The ship will also be decorated with a figurehead and a company emblem. The ship also has an outer layer of planks. In order to shape the planks to follow the hull, they have to be moistened with steam. This involves placing them in a special chamber and leaving them for four to six hours while they are steamed at 100 degrees Celsius. They then have to be put in place within 15 to 20 minutes before they harden again and become more difficult to shape.
The heaviest planks weigh half a ton. Here you can see an exterior reinforcement, called a whale, being fitted. The lower whale is around 15 centimeters thick. Here too, powerful clamps have to be used to bend the plates around the ribs. The ribs also have lines on them showing where the planks go, and they have to be attached with millimeter precision. The planks are attached using nails of up to 350 millimeters long. Two nails are used for each plank. The heads of the nails are wound with tarred bindings to ensure the hull is waterproof. Compressed air machines are used to drive in the nails. A lot of pine trees are needed to make the ship's masts. The trees are around 55 to 60 centimeters in diameter and 16 to 17 meters tall. All the timber used in the ship is felled in the wintertime to ensure it contains as little water as possible. As soon as the logs are transported to the shipyard, Terra Nova, the mast must be immediately sawn using a special chainsaw which is pulled on a rail. The ship has three masts, and the biggest is made from several trees to ensure sufficient diameter. The various parts of the mast are sawn into rounded sections, which fit around a core in the center of the mast. The sections are left to dry, and once dry they are ready to be joined to the mast. The mast sections are held together by notches in each one. The sections are also oiled to prevent splitting. After the parts are oiled, they are treated with a type of red lead to give protection from rust. Here we see parts of the bowsprit which will be joined around the middle piece. The seven different parts are over 16 meters long. They are joined together with a millimeter precision and totally without glue. Here is the bowsprit, more or less completed, in the ship's hull. The vessel has three lower masts and a bowsprit. Over the masts are a number of poles and yards, which together make up the ship's rigging. Large quantities of lumber, in total, over hundreds of pines and spruce, have been harvested so that the masts, bowsprit, poles, small poles and yards can be raised. The masts, bowsprit and poles are made of pine. The yards and small poles are made of spruce, 
40 gigantic pines, which were 60 centimeters in diameter and 20 meters long, were needed for just two of the large masts. When parts of the rigging are completed, they are transported to the rigging workshop. There, all of the yards and masts are attired with their respective blocks and slings. Different parts must be joined together to form the lower mast. For this, a 700-degree oven is used. Now we must hurry, quick, attach the iron, and drive it up to the correct position before it cools and gets stuck. The mast is coated with mutton sweat, which catches on fire. With plenty of time to spare, the iron is cooled before it can damage the mast. All in all, the ship will have around 2,000 square meters of sails, as well as reserve sails, hammocks, and covers. All of the linen sails are stitched by hand and come from England. Some of the sails are gigantic. The main top sail, for example, is 250 square meters. In this sail alone, there are over 87,000 stitches. When the double planking of oaks is in place, bolts will be driven through the hull. The bolts will then be nailed from the inside. To strengthen the hull, more than 200 forged steel knees are used. The purpose of these are to bind the decks and the hull together. On the upper decks, we are using wooden oak knees made from crooked oaks in exactly the same way as was done in the 1700s. In the carpentry workshop, the different parts that were earlier formed to the ship are sawed. For an elbow joint of wood to be strong enough, it must be grown naturally. Here is an oak with strong roots that will contribute to the building of the ship. With the help of patterns and a motor saw, the elbow joint is sculptured from the root.
After many hours of hard work, here we see a natural wooden elbow joint that is waiting to be bolted to the ship. The bolted elbow joint joins the side of the ship with a stern plank to create an impressive strength. Holes are made in the stern of the ship for the enormous bowsprit. Within the ship, the different decks are laid and nailed to the deck beams. After this, the deck is strengthened for the mast and the mast clamps.